Hello and you're very welcome to the Jamrock Podcast. I'm John Gwynn, of course the podcast brought to you by orgaretch.com. Use the program Jamrock Podcast to get 15% off on their website. League finals this weekend. Get yourself organised on orgaretch.com and get yourself an orgaretch jersey head to Coke Park this weekend. And tonight, or oh, well today, yeah, sorry we always do this at night time normally, but it's during the day. Uh, I'm joined by Kevin Kennedy from the GA Sports Tracker app and uh, really uh, going to talk to Kev just about last weekend's action, of course, this weekend's league final. So really looking forward to this weekend. Oh, the year's flying by, Kevin. I don't know how comfortable I am with it all, but look, at, we have to acclimatise to this madness. How are you, sir? I'm good, John. I'm good. Um, yeah, the year's flying by. We're almost halfway through now, or... Quarter of the year, three and a half I through the end of county season. Mad to think about. Um, so I don't think that I think there'll be a, a topic of discussion for the football review committee around about how well the split season's working because I know a lot of managers are giving off about it and stuff at the minute. Um, so yeah, maybe in the years and years to come, it might see a wee bit of an extension or tweaking of where we are at the moment. Mm, yeah, fingers crossed, man. It's definitely taken a lot of getting used to. It's only since someone there at the weekend. I know me and you probably have had this conversation before about when, you know, like obviously your, your Paddy's Days games and your all Iron final September's, and there's probably a lot to be said for the third Sunday of September, but it doesn't look like it's going to be returning anytime soon at the minute anyway, Kevy. Uh, did you have a good weekend? Yeah, it was a grand weekend, grand weekend. It was like some years see more with the kids and I got away and I didn't think it was getting to it, but I managed to get down to the Andron game anyway, get in um, just as the game was about to start there. Um, not a game for the ages, but sure, we'll probably cover that during the, the, the call today and we'll see where we are. Mm, yeah, just like the Fermanagh Calvin game on the weekend, Jesus, I was very disappointed with how the Calvin ads went to a bar party lynch, maybe James. But again, yeah, we will crack into it. Kevy, it's great to hear you're in good form and looking forward to chatting to you today. So I suppose we can crack in to the action in, oh, a bit of housekeeping actually before we get the ball rolling. Jesus, I'm so off course today, Kevy. Jesus, this, this area starts to really knock me off now, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, so the GA Dotty football team of the week for this week is in the goals is Aidan Devaney, a full back line of Dermot Campbell, Tyke Morley and Caleb Doherty, and then a half back line of John Ford, uh, Ryan Howard and Glenn Malone, and then a midfield of Matty Ryan and Joe Connor, then a half forward line of Colin Buskell, Ryan O'Rourke and Ian Doherty, and then a full forward line of Mark Barry, Garvin Jones and Lachlan Murray. I have to agree with Garvin Jones inside there. He was absolutely fantastic against Cavan at the weekend. My God, he, he had a fantastic game to his credit. And then the footballer for the nominees for this week are Joe O'Connor of Kerry, Garvin Jones of Hermana, and Colin Basquell of Dublin. Garvin Jones has a serious chance of winning it this week. But uh, Mr. Basquell will probably get it. Um, Mr. Kenny's most thoughts on Team of the Week? Yeah, interesting there that um, Brian Hard, you know, only coming back in, such back in the centre half back in that team of the week. He, I think he hasn't played much football at all so far this season. Colin Squill obviously, he's gone coming away with about 2 3 in Crook Park yesterday against Tyrone as a, an almighty score. Um, Colin, Colin Doherty uh, probably deserves to be in there. He's been having three, four excellent weeks in the bench now, so an outstanding footballer from Kilku. And then Joe O'Connor for all the Derry, or not the Derry, all the carry worries around about midfield. I think Joe O'Connor's shown that he is an established midfielder now at intercounty level. So, no great surprises there, I suppose. Maybe with uh, Paddy Lynch being in there, what he scored 1 8 against for Mana and misses out. So, um, I know you probably have a bit of a great with that, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there definitely, in fairness, a bit of a gripe now. In fairness, I, I was saying on Twitter there yesterday that, you know, probably without. Paddy on Saturday and I suppose without Paddy throughout the league I really don't know where Cavan probably would be at, uh, at times because he just he scored an absolutely excellent goal Kevin I don't know did you get a chance to see it on the BBC Sport website or even on GA Go it no. was just a rocket of a goal it was a rocket of goal and obviously former Tyrone footballer Ronan O'Neill obviously in with the he's in with the Fermanagh lads as a fourth coach this year and obviously last year he thought the goal was fantastic could be one of the goals of the year um, and he just his free take it was excellent uh, the dead balls everything probably went well for him now, so um, yeah, I think he probably could have been uh, could have been maybe on the team of the week this week. But I suppose it's good to kind of share it around and obviously give the uh, I suppose so called weaker counties uh, the day in the sun as well. Um, James Smith, maybe as well, uh, for Crush Law, he had a good game on Saturday night as well, really forced the issue uh, towards the end. Uh, but yeah, again, as you say, probably not a whole pile of arguments with that team of the week now. I have to say, as you say, Brian Howard in his center half back there, uh, slotting in. Um, but Garvin Jones, yeah, geez, for a man on Saturday, he was just exceptional. Uh, and then it's most of the week. Um, Mr. Kennedy, what do we think? And who, who gets this week? 
I think it will be basketball. I don't think you can go to Croke Park and score two three and not get football. Like, um, you know, and although right, they, they run away with the game in the end, but they still, you know, it's Division One football. Do we score in two three in a Division One football summer term? Yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. And yeah, obviously, Gavin Jones is nominated as well, and Joe O'Connor. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who picks it up, as you say. But I think Colin Busquell will more than likely get over the line this week. And then I suppose, Kevin, we will crack into the action yesterday that took place in the Allianz National Football League Division One, round seven, last round of leagues. Uh, of course, the finals are this weekend. Uh, you had Derry against Roscommon in Celtic Park. It was Derry 2 19. Ross Common won nine in Celt Park. Um, that's a very cruel way for Ross Common to finish up their league campaign. Like David Burke was saying after the game, Kevin, that Ross Common played very well for the first 50 minutes. But unfortunately, Mr. Kennedy in Division One and I suppose in GA, you need to play well for the 70. 50 won't cut the, won't cut the butter. But uh, Derry are looking very, very good. But my God, Ross Common have a mountain of work to do for the Connacht Championship. Yeah, a huge amount of work to do. Um, I listened to Davy Burke author and it sent out some alarm bells to me, you know, that they obviously set up very defensively for the first 50 minutes of the game. Match Derry in terms of what was it, 1-8, the 1-8. Um, and then they tried to push on and only scored a point, whereas Derry then scored one goal and 11 points within that space of 20 minutes. Um, I don't know what way they tried to push on, where they decided to go, you know, six men, the full forward line plus a keeper and just leave completely up at the back. But they can see that scoreline in the last sort of 20 minutes of the game is absolutely mental. Um, maybe he should have stuck with it a bit longer and tried to nip it in a point towards the end. But plan, D, B, plan B didn't work for them in the game. Plan B hasn't worked for them all year so far. And yeah, you'd have to be very concerned about them coming in the championship. Connacht probably isn't firing in all cylinders. We know that, you know, Galway have underperformed this year. Mayo and my eyes have underperformed this year. Could Ross Common still come through and win Connacht? No, I can't see it. To be honest, I can't see where they're going to get that spark of light um, from their players to come back or their player maybe re back into the team now. But whenever you look at Galway, having Shane Boss to come back into it, uh, Sean Kelly hasn't played much football. There just doesn't seem to be the appetite in Ross Common this year. Don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. They haven't fired at all. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it was, it is definitely worn of science going into the college championship. That's a, that's a stark result now for the They have got relegated after that. And I think like I said to Renick at the start of the year that we're coming on and probably we're the two teams that are going to, we're going to probably suffer relegation. And it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's happened. But Derry 219 in Celtic Park. And they are looking very, very good at the minute. They are looking pretty, very much like Dublin, fairly formidable at the minute. And obviously, the league final this weekend of Dublin Derry will be very, very interesting. I suppose any kind of learnings from Derry for this particular game, or was it just a complete note of trouble? No, I think that Derry have went about their business really well. You know, they they dropped a lot of, well, they didn't play their strongest hand against Dublin. Maybe now with Crook Park and safety, they can see why that was. They were in a good position to finish well in the league, but we talk. We, we've talked often in this, John, around about uh, Shane McGuig and his impact and Harville and Derry on, are upon them. But they got a good range of scores yesterday. You know, even Potty Cassidy, I think, got two points in the end. Ethan Doherty came back. Um, he was with, what, Noss 3 or Noss 4 in the game. And then the young lad, Murray, um, you know, Logan Murray, he ended up in the game with 1-4 or 1-5. So Shane McGuigan was probably matched in terms of usually we're used to Shane McGuigan finishing off at not seven, not yet the game, which is fantastic. But he only hit not four yesterday, you know. Um, so there was like better, a better spread. And I think from Derry's point of view, that's probably good to see. Really interesting next week to see how they go on Crew Park. You know, I think that's probably the key to them is how they get on at Crew Park. Um, do they adopt a, a kicking game that we probably are not used to them actually playing? Or do they try and continue to do what they're doing because now they've played in a few more players like so Young Murray in there um, to add that strength going forward. So I think coming off the back of the Dublin Throne game, we're in for a cracker this weekend. We think we're in for a cracking game between those two. Like, it could be, you know, in terms of league finals, you don't often look final forward to them. But there you have a good enough break now between the league final this weekend. I think it's four weeks before they play in their um, Ulster Championship game. So it's a good, decent break. There's, they've nothing to lose by going full hog up. 
Mm, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, I think Mickey Hark after the game yesterday said that like getting rid of the league finals would be a disgrace. I think was it said or wouldn't just wouldn't be good. I suppose maybe there is a bit of a like there's always seems to be a bit of a method to Mickey Hart's madness. And I suppose always a side to probably nearly everything he says. So obviously he he probably will appreciate this game against Dublin this weekend. And, I think I said that it was at last weekend or the week before that, um, you know, will suit certain teams to be in the league final. I think it, like Dublin this weekend, look, they're going to be facing into an immense championship. They're, they're at one hundred and ten percent more than likely going to be winning, as is per usual. Derry, as you say, what four weeks away from the other championship, so it's going to be a good test for both teams this weekend. And I hope you know the do go hammer tongue at it because it has the potential, as a lot of these games normally do, to be a cracker. Yeah, many hearts. He's never far off the mark, you know, whether you like him or not, he's never far off the mark whenever it comes to it. And I think his point was made that Dublin playing Crew Park every other week. Derry are going to play in Crew Park more regular now. He's used to playing Crew Park with uh, Tyrone on a regular occasions. He likes a cabin and Antrim and Fermanagh and, you know, maybe even the leashes of this world. They'd be less likely to play in Crew Park, um, probably more so now than ever before. But they have been less likely to play over the last number of years in Crew Park. So a day out for the players who reach that final. Um, the play for the fans who have been following them all year. They make a weekend of it. Our Morgan in the final this weekend. Um, and I know all their supporters are well looking forward to it. They have supporters traveling numbers all over the place. They will bite your hand off to get down in the Dublin. So it's a good day out for them. Like, regardless of what we think in terms of the winner takes all, in hindsight, look, the league's probably short enough that it's not like a Premier League. You're not playing 30 matches. You, if you go on a run of two or three matches, as you know, Mal was saying that he, he would be happy with Derry getting three wins and then rest and players um, get them safe in Division 1. Our leagues are probably too short to do anything else. Our leagues are in a position whereby top two go through um, into the final and you play off on it. I even heard some stuff around about this weekend, around about the head-to-head, and it should be a tally of points and all that jazz. I think I was coming on the back of what happened in Waxford and Leitrim. But, um, no, I think our, we, we can't look at our leagues in the same way you would look at a football league over eight or nine months. We have eight weeks to run off our leagues. Um, maybe a, a, a fitting final to them is the, the league final. It's probably unfair and conic because they are straight in the next week, but that's only one place you have to look at. I'm sure you could afford to push the Connacht Championship back a couple of weeks and give boys an extra bit of a break. Mm, yeah, you definitely could. Like, cause I suppose you, you, a lot of people say about this bit season and how, how effective it's been and it's working and I suppose the mechanics of it all. But yeah, I definitely think, you know, I think to push it, push back a week, give the players a bit of a break, give the players a bit of a chance to recover, recuperate, and maybe get off or take a few days off. But uh, yeah, player welfare, sure. Kevin, as me. And, yeah, sorry, go on. There's that time in it, you know, there is that time to do it. And even if it came, John, to the point whereby we're looking at starting a league we don't there's I know people crack up about this and they'll say around about oh it's a way we train and things like that and giving players rest and like speaking the inter-county managers three division one games back to back is tough especially we're not talking about the head of summer here with the ground firm and you can move freely across the pitch the you know the muscle injuries or muscle tightness coming from particularly calf muscles are starting to spring up a lot in the game at the minute, uh, there's evidence to prove that, you know, you'll need another year on it to, to sort of prove that evidence is actually a trend as opposed to just a one-off blip. But um, no, I know inter-county teams are facing injuries they haven't done bef- as frequently before. But you remember that they're not only training on, they're not only, sorry, playing on a Sunday or a Saturday on a heavy pitch. They're also training during the week. Unless you're in Lakes of Mayo or unless you're in somewhere that has a 4G pitch, which not a lot of counties also train on, their training is also done on these heavy pitches as well. So it's not about changing, it's about making small changes to it. And there is time in the calendar to push that Connacht game back, even by two weeks. There's no there's no problem with that pushing that Connacht game back for two weeks. And that stops Mayo playing their best football yesterday because they didn't want to reach a uh, league final then maybe that is something to look at. You know, if more teams are going for it, then they would probably make it a bit more interesting towards the end. I don't know about you, but I certainly felt you're only looking at a couple of results yesterday. Not as often. You know, you're looking at them all to see how they've gone, but you're looking at saying, how did Leitrim do? What about Ross Common? Yeah. As opposed to what about Galway? Because it was in Ross Common's hands. You didn't have to check a Galway score. It was, what's going on in Ross Common? They're not winning, right? That's him and Stone. That was Division 1, sort of. So, mm. yeah, tweaking. It's not, it's not perfect, but a bit of tweaking will do. And we continue to, if we search, search for continued improvement rather than perfection, we'll always do well. 
Mm, mm, yeah, no, because I think the TJ Carr, I think it was at the Galway Kerry game, and then that they were showing the other games, obviously Dublin Tyrone and Dublin were absolutely you know, blowing Tyrone out of the water, and then you had the other games, uh, who else was playing that they were showing, they had uh, Mon and Mayo, clips of that, and then obviously Derry was common, and like all them games, like, you know, the Division 3 and 4 games definitely would have been, like, more for, for once, they would have, um, for large parts, would have been definitely worth keeping it more of an eye on, but look, at that's the way TG Carr went about their business yesterday, Mr. Kennedy, and we'll crack into Dublin and Tyrone in Croke Park yesterday, it was Dublin 5-18, Tyrone 12 points uh yes i just did say that sentence and i'm still trying to get my head around it uh brian do was saying after the game that he was pretty much embarrassed by the result performance um i think Tyrone did quite did very much experiment with the team and i suppose everyone was really looking forward to the Derek kind of v Conor Callan battle but it just didn't transpire like that and dublin had different ideas my god they are looking absolutely outrageous at the mr kennedy and at the minute and mr cluxton was doing the warm-up yeah, seeing he's back into a bit of uh, pre-season training while everybody else is finishing off the league. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be unfair to say that it was the strongest Dublin team out there too. You know, Dublin did tinker a bit with their team. You know, um, you knew coming full back, you'd, you had Brian Hard in at half back, which he probably wouldn't be typically familiar with. You had McGuinness in there, corner forward as well. So they, it wasn't the, uh, a full out Dublin team, which is scary. You know, it wasn't a full out, full gone 15 championship at Dublin. That is scary. They are the team to pick at the minute. You know, they are the team to beat at the minute. They're sitting up in there. The only thing I would do is say, you know, the last time that Tyrone were embarrassed like that was in a famous game where Nell Morgan get lobbed by Kerry and they ended up going on to win the All Ireland. So maybe that's a kick up a yeah. back to Tyrone need. I wouldn't put Tyrone away in their box or anything. And um, they were obviously have some players as well. But no, you'd expect them to do a bit better than what they actually did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really know. There's much more to say about this game. It was just such a hammering, and I watched the leaks under the area yesterday, and Dublin just moved the ball so well. And you know, it's probably Dublin of the old when they're just literally walking the ball into the net, and you see all these. Like, and don't get me wrong, it was actually really like if you're if you're an attacking lover, if you're a forward lover, like attack and play, like it really was your game to watch because the way the Dublin moved the ball, they got up the pitch, it was so quick. It like it really was the Dublin of old, Mister Kennedy. Have to be said. Yeah, it's the. It, they have been coming, you know, they had a slow start to the league, anybody will tell you that, they, they looked amazing in the first 15-20 minutes against Monaghan, and then the handbrake went on, and Monaghan came back and beat them. Similar to Mayo, they looked fantastic for the first 10-15-20 minutes of that game, and then the handbrake went on. There was always potential there from the, to break that glass ceiling, and once they have broke it, that's over the last three games, they've achieved over 70% um, conversion on their shots to score ratio, which hasn't been done by a Dublin team since the you know the Jim Galvin ages. Um so it, it shows that they're they're right up there, they're motoring well. Can they carry that now three and two championship? Yeah, they can. Um the only blip might be that they're going into a very easy Leinster competition. I'm not sure whether Leinster suit Dublin, but it gives Dublin it's almost like two seasons for them. You know, they get their league over out of the way, bang, it's done. Um and then they get through last year's almost like a pre-season before they go into the All-Ireland series as well. So maybe that suits Dublin an awful lot. But it's funny enough, the Division 1 final is the Division 2 final of last year. You know, yeah. the same teams are in there. Um, so that's probably, I don't think that's probably ever been heard of before. But it shows you that the importance of both Dublin and Derry. They didn't want to get relegated, obviously, but it shows you the importance they, they wanted to put um, a good league campaign in this year so they don't find themselves back into the Division 2 again. Mm. Yeah, 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 I think that's all we can talk about. Uh, the events of Crow Park yesterday, oh my God, yeah, Mr. Dewar was not a happy man yesterday. You can have to say that. And then we'll move on to Kerry against Galway in Fitzgerald Stadium. It was Kerry, 15 points, Galway, 110. Big talk points going into this one that both Clifford's arrested. Um, I think they came on for the last 10 or 15 minutes and obviously got on ball, but uh, probably just weren't need for this particular game. And Kerry still got over the line. Uh, and obviously, Pork Joyce, very, I suppose, disappointed after the game, had to be said. And Jesus, in fairness, if you're a Galway player on the panel at the minute, um, you'd have to be reading into a couple of his comments after the game. I think he said, like, for the panel of players that Galway have at the minute and had for the league, it was an impressive achievement to stay up. And, you know, um, yeah, I don't know if you're a player on that Galway team at the minute, how happy you'd be with them remarks. But anyway, Kerry got the job done. 
Yeah, Kerry got the job done. I was surprised that they did bring a Clifford's into it. But then again, you know, as Jared Connor says, after the seven or eight injuries in there, that um, that they they weren't expecting to have. Maybe if they had had, there's obviously boys who would be in that panel. They didn't need a win yesterday. It was not on the play for for Kerry yesterday, and they had had a bit more more players already come in who were fit. They will um, they would have prayed them. They obviously now go away on their 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 week away. And they will do whatever homework and stuff they have to do over there. And it'll bring carry on even more come a championship time. Sean, Sean Cabin's comments yesterday that Derry and Tru or Derry and Dublin are maze ahead of everybody else is completely utter BS. You know, Kerry, you can't read off Kerry. Kerry will get to this stage of the league. I'll be happy enough. They'll always look on the performance and then they'll take themselves off, regroup a couple of weeks off before they go into a very easy monster championship. Regardless of whether they win, even if Kerry get beat by Cork. So Cork went away to Portugal or something changed and they come back and they've played really well. They've got two wins and a draw in their last three games. Even if they get beat by Cork, that doesn't defend Kerry's season. Kerry's there for the All-Ireland. You know, Kerry people won't celebrate winning the Munster Championship. They won't like losing one, but they won't celebrate winning one either. You know, that's how yeah. um, scrupulous they are. But that's okay. You know, the Kerry are Kerry, and they will be looking forward to later on in the year whenever they can play long ball and kick and ball in um, in Crow Park on the latter stages of the championship. I think in Galway, yeah, uh, the the comments weren't they weren't overly positive. You know, there's ways in which you can say something that frames it, and it diff- you can say the same thing and frame it in a different way. So you know, he he kind of says things like you know. Like these boys really stepped up the mark and made sure that we had our Division One status secured for another yeah. year. And they, we've had a lot of injuries, but fair play to them. And you, you can like it's that glass half or half empty sort of thing. But unless he knows his players and said, "Hey, these no, look, we're our backs against the wall here. We don't have the depth we need to have. You, you just have to pull us out here, but it might be an act was on in house." I don't think it's as rice as what the what I've seen of David Burke lately in his comments. You know, I'd be more like, worried about him shooting from the cuff. But then yeah. you do look at like Kieran McGinney, um, and just Kieran. But I've talked on maybe three weeks in a row now. He's just impressed me with his even his attitude this year in terms of speaking to the media. He was laughing about it than the interview with Alfred Ball history, where he says mm-hmm. about negative in the media and stuff and then he starts laughing and he says that's because he i'm laughing because he knows i don't talk to the media you know and then he brings it back saying look we have a brilliant product here with a good game the guys are working hard it's not mm. it's not easy on them so there is ways of frame it um and i don't think joyce done that overly well but at the same time he's right in what he's saying they have managed to stay in division one by the skin of their feet um mm. After their first game against Mayo, you were wondering where they were going. Uh, they obviously still had de- people to bring back into that team. I do still think that they'll win Connacht. I do think if they get the players back, they'll win Connacht. I think they're a better team than Mayo. Um, are there, they have more options than what Mayo have. I don't think Ross Common will be a worry this year in the Connacht Championship. But just shows you where we are. Last year, to say, there was people on Boston, Connacht, and saying how brilliant there was in the top three teams in the Ireland all came from the West. And now where are they? You know, they're they're two of them are lucky to stay in Division One this year. Um and Mayo aren't firing in all cylinders either. So I don't know. It seems like comic the, the football in the West is in a bit a bit of a blip. I wouldn't say a bad place, but it'll be a bit of a blip. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the, again, it does go show like when God we don't have Cobra and Shane Walsh, and I know obviously it's good to for key men and key men make a huge difference, but um yeah, God was like if, if them boys, like and you presume for the championship, they will be raised right. But without them pair of boys, Galway are very ordinary. It has to be said. They are. They have a couple of you know, have a couple of half decent players in there who can play football. You know, they but without. I mean, take David Clifford or Kerry, and it brings them down a notch. Yeah. You take you know at the minute you take Con out of Dublin, and they have enough around them, but they're still not as potent as they can be. You take Shane McGuigan out of Derry, and again, it brings Emma down a notch too. So no matter what teams you have, there's always one or two players in there who bring them on to the standard that they need to be. And unfortunately for Galway, they have been missing those two key players who do that for them in the shape of Walsh and Kelly. You know, two outstanding footballers who any county would miss. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of like Paul Lynch. If Mr. Lynch was getting injured for Calvin, we would be in border as well, as we said. And then we'll move on to the last game of Division 1 over the weekend, Mr. Kennedy. It was Monaghan against Mayo. It was Mayo 213. Ross, sorry, Mon- uh, sorry, what am I saying? Mayo 213, Monaghan 114 in Clonus. No last day drama. No real eyes on Clonus, um, bar maybe the Monaghan supporters uh, cheering the team on. We always have eyes on Clonus on the last day, but Monaghan's fate was seen last weekend to Division 2. Uh, good win for Mayo, it has to be said. And on the road, especially, Clonus is a very tricky place to go, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, and you know I did think Monaghan were not a shoe-in, but I thought they would give it a good roll. And they did do that. They did perform well um, for most of the game. Mayo probably just coming away in the end uh, with that win. Monaghan still obviously have a few players to get back in there to help them with that. It probably shows you that Monaghan's, that Mayo's depth is a wee bit greater than what maybe I had taken it for. Um, they had made eight changes from the game before. Uh, you know, Paddy Durkin and stuff coming back in there. Obviously, you know, players there who may be missing. So maybe there is a bit more depth to Mayo than what meets the eye. And maybe Cam Moore, so, you know, he's happy to be Checking along nicely, get his win, and he's going in there with a wee bit of rest, um, or not a wee bit of rest. He's away in New York next week. Um, we trip to New York, and they will come back. I probably a team ready to have a serious go at the All Ireland this year. They haven't shown it in the league so far, but you look at the maybe I wouldn't call it a reserve team, but their second team they played just three did do a job against a poor Monaghan team. And Monaghan, even you know, Monaghan were never going to get beat by ten points in that game. They would have fought right through to the end. That that was going on, you know. And um, they getting the man sent off didn't help, but at the same time, they they still rely on a few more players to come back. And I think that that game against Cavan, Monaghan will fancy themselves going into despite Cavan having a good wee bit of a run there in the league. I think Monaghan will fancy themselves to sort of sneak along next day in the Ulster Championship this year. Mm, yeah, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Interesting to see, Mr. Kenny, and we'll move on to Division 2 action. All four games, of course, were on Saturday in the Alliance National Football League. Division 2, Round 7, last league games for all these teams. It was Cavan against Fermanagh in Kingsman Refugee Park. It was Fermanagh 2-14, Cavan 1-13. Very good win for Fermanagh now, it has to be said. Uh, we went to this game, was, you know, Fermanagh definitely were head and shoulders above Cavan now in this particular game, and that's two wins in a row each year. The one last year, the one this year in the league against Cavan, and um, it was good, very good performance from Fermanagh. Garvin Jones, obviously, uh, he was just, he was um, really, he was just a, a superb game. And in fairness, and he kicked, uh, kicked one eight, just like Polly Lynch. Um, he was brilliant. He done everything right for Fermanagh uh, from Cavan and the things. Up. I said it to you last week. I would have probably been expecting the win, the result, but it just at times it really just didn't look like. Um, I think a lot of eyes seem to be on Ulster Championship now, and obviously you're two weeks away from Monaghan now in Clonus, so maybe all eyes are on that at this stage. And maybe I seen obviously Kevin Riley was taken off at half time. Kenny Clark was taken off, and probably bring on a couple of lads. But um, yeah, again, I think we are. It's probably very evident. To see, we probably are very heavily reliant on uh, Paddy Lynch. I think that's probably the element in the room that doesn't seem to be much support for him up there at the minute. Um, his goal was fantastic there on Saturday night. His dead balls were really, really good. Probably what Shane McGuigan's probably doing for Derry, really, but um, I don't think having just have the calibre of forwards, maybe just to kind of give him the support up there. But look, at from a cabinet, the things you'd like to think there is a lot of emphasis being put in the Ulster Championship. Um, Ray probably is planning towards that now. It's really not far away. The weeks are flying by. Um, so maybe there is a lot of emphasis into it, but I just think it was just the stages it's really just you thought like when are we going to kind of start playing here in one of them sort of games when we can absolutely play and attack teams but for man we're really full of credit for the victory uh, I was talking to Ronan and Neil and uh, Kieran Donnelly after the game and they were very happy but then of course obviously they did get relegated obviously other results kind of depending on it so uh, the pair of boys were happy but um, yeah not the Saturday night I wanted to miss Kennedy No I think with um, for man I think getting relegated can count themselves a bit unlucky you know they they got well, they finished with five points in the league. Um, you look at a couple of other divisions, five points were keeping teams safe. Um, so it's just the, the luck of what way Division 2 worked out onto it. Uh, yeah, you, you touched on a nice point there, John, around about all eyes being on the, the Ulster Championship now in a few weeks' time. And that sort of gives you the the insight into where most games probably were yesterday. It was almost a lot of teams saying, well, you know, we're, we're, we need to keep boys safe. Um, we need to keep boys help protect or whatever it might be and maybe didn't go full hog you've seen Armagh which we'll touch on as well playing a 
a lot of changes in their team overall to it. With Cavan, yeah, Cavan have raised on really well at keeping them in Division 2 this year. I think that had to be the overall objective, but it'd be nice to also get a run in the Ulster Championship, at least get a win in the Ulster Championship. It'd be some, it'd be some introduction year to your first year as Inter-County Manager. Mm, yeah, no, it definitely would. It definitely would, I suppose. And, um, yeah, it would. Like, And I think that that's probably, in fairness, what I kind of said at the start of the year. It would be safe. I'd be happy with kind of like, staying put in the video. But I just think there's probably, like, you know, your separate skin, there's ways uh, you go about doing things. And you, you suppose you kind of like to finish in style or, you know, do. I suppose you, every game is so important these days. And, you know, they're obviously is a back. And so I just think the last three performances heading into Monon now, two weeks' time. Um, is probably not. I know. As I suppose you can, you see a lot of a different kind of perspective on it. But you kind of want as good a preparation head into that game as possible. So I just think the last three performances probably just won't cut the bacon. So there is going to be there's there is going to a lot, we will need to improve from Monaghan because I think Monaghan will get their house in order for that game. I can really see them getting up for it. Yeah, it depend. It really depends on what I mean. The spectators we're watching the game with the interest of everything going right and everything going well and you know people playing for the jersey um it's a wee bit different if if ray has sat down look here's two things we want to work on this game and we're focused on this game we're not worried about the result but for monaghan we want to work on these two things it might be a high press or maybe be successfully working the ball up the pitch within 30 seconds or so like that but if you're not seeing it chances are it wasn't hugely obvious you can usually pick up what teams are trying to work on despite the result not going in their favor you may be able to pick up one or two things that they have obviously improved on since the last time that they played and that wasn't the case yesterday or it wasn't the case in the game before then there may be a wee bit of concern to come in there you know, obviously a big concern there is around by potty and you know the one eight that he's scoring by himself um maybe one of their objectives would have been to maybe spread those scores a wee bit more but as as an observer, sometimes you can see that, and maybe as a neutral observer, you can see it more. Sometimes as a fan or a, a team of your home county, you're just looking at great performance and the win that goes in with it. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me all right? Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I'm just going to try something. Perfectly, I'm just going to try something here. Um, I'm just going to try. Can you can you see a different screen there? Yeah. 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 Perfect. So this is. Can you see Ronan O'Neill? You can. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So this is a uh, uh, Ronan O'Neill on Saturday night after the game. Uh, this is his thoughts after the game. So Kevy, uh, one, two, three, and perfect. Okay, with Fermanagh, I've got the results here against Cavan, Kingsman, Breffley Park, and talk to Fermanagh Fort's coach, Ronan Neal, after the game. Ronan, what was the thoughts in that game? Uh, well, I suppose after last week's uh, defeat against Loud, uh, we just asked the boys to make a performance in. Uh, New Cavan performed really well, and we were safe in the division, so I uh, just wanted the boys to have a, have a bit of teeth and be a bit more aggression and intensity and just put, put a pride back in the managers. Really. So uh, I thought they did that for, for large spells, but obviously Cavan called the team, came back and did their pilot and scored a scream of a goal. Uh, but uh, very tight there, but uh, listen, I thought the boys played reasonably well. Uh, some, some great forward play, some great defensive play as well. So, um, nice to run it off the win. You know, I suppose it's the same to Kieran Donnelly there. Rowan and obviously Cavan in relatively good form throughout the league to come to Kings My Breath Park and put in a performance like that. You have to be pleased. Oh, by time, yeah. By time, man. Uh, first, of all, they started off the National League very well. Got three points out of four. Um, obviously, it didn't have our my game. Probably, probably, we're probably a step ahead of, of the team at the moment. But um, the Cork game was just quite disappointing. Been in the game for so long and then getting up to the end. So, and then the last game, sure, that can happen at any time. Uh, just as Terrorised and end up in other results of relegation, but uh, to come here two years in a row and put, a, put two good performances in, like you know, and shows a uh, character of the team. There, so. And you enjoying enjoying your role with the Fermanagh lads, uh, Ronan? Yeah, 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 it's, it's uh, thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, some days it doesn't sort of materialise, you know, and uh, today to, uh, some really good passes to play and great bunch of lads to work with. Absolutely, and I suppose, I suppose obviously the work and high equipment that goes into it, 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 it suppose it, it's a real difference from suppose playing Ronan, and obviously it's your team seeing a real different side of things now at this oh, stage. Yeah, nice. And when you're involved in the kind of team, you're involved with the team, you really focus on yourself, you know, trying to give the best of your, best kind of yourself. But from a uh, coaching point perspective man manager's perspective it's a different uh, uh kettle of fish all together so uh, it's nice to get that blend and 
Uh, still trying to kick away with a bit of ball it's all between the two anyway I suppose heading into the championship with a bit of confidence now Rowan's good win tonight and Bill Block's now for a couple of weeks time yeah three weeks away yeah, yeah. our mass serious team you know yourself I see the stat there I see the level of players they have you know they can feel two teams well, at the kind of level would be, would be fantastic so um Listen, we'll be up against it. Uh, they performed reasonably well uh, in Brewster Park, but you know, I'm a bit different kettle of fish come um, three weeks' time. So, listen, boys, work hard for three weeks and see where Absolutely, I suppose from Kevin and his role and who and pressure from the Kevin end of things. So, I suppose we're targeting tonight, I suppose. Ah, uh, well, it was, you know, Highlands Series 4 is probably one of the best in the area. Um, we've seen some of the quality free kicks and some players who scored from him for contempt of the year, I'd say, imagine so. Um, James Smith, quality player, watching for a number of years there and uh, Oshin Biddy an excellent player there at 11 there so um, some quality players um, Calvin Haven and um, should have constant chances against Monon yeah fingers crossed so was, uh, less, was a lot of work to do that and obviously yeah. we followed Jerome's kind of fortune throughout the league obviously uh, the dubs around Coke Park Derek Hanover be Conor Callan be one to look forward to oh it was indeed uh, uh, Jerome had probably a mixed bag in one good game we not so good half of that there so um, listen if Jerome can, can get the consistency right there's another top top four or five team in, in Ireland so uh, they'll probably have the problem most informed well two informed for Ben Morris and uh, been interested to see Dara in the wide open spaces of uh, Cook Park and hopefully they can back up their performance last week and have a good performance and do you miss playing for the right hand thrown in or do you, do you miss it at all ah well listen there's, there's days when in the, in the summer months and Sam's comes out you get a, a certain feel that you wish you were there still but listen I'm happy with my 10 year tenure so is and uh, happy enough that I'm going to be putting into different uh, aspects now with coaching and still playing with so I'm happy enough for my eye thanks very much thanks and well done tonight cheers thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, perfect, Mr. Kennedy. Have I you got you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was good. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, of course, we're back at it. Yeah. So, I just thought I'd show that clip of obviously Ronan O'Neill after the game on Saturday night. Obviously, Ronan in his sports coach. So, was that what that what his thoughts was on the games? Was Mr. Kennedy any thoughts on Ronan's comments, sir? No, I think you know we. Interesting to see about how you take a different perspective on it uh, as a player, as a coach, you know, even from a club level to a county level, always trying to get the best out of yourself and then having to look outside yourself and look outside your players and stuff like that. So I think that's something that maybe a lot of players who are currently playing don't often see. They're more worried about doing the best that they can themselves, that they actually have to be coached to football. You know, it's about being big and strong and fast and quick and be able to you know, move at pace and rate tackles. But there's a, there's a football IQ that player, a lot of players don't have and you need to be able to be coached that. And you see it with Derry. Derry are highly intelligent. Kerry, Dublin, they're all highly intelligent because they're, they don't have, well, not saying they don't have that football IQ naturally, but it's part of their game. It's part of their coaching. It's about understanding the game and developing of the game um, that you maybe don't get whenever you go down in Division 3s and Division 4s. It's more about getting boys flying fit, doing the Broncos, run as quick as you can. And you can definitely see that the standard of football in terms of the intensity is not the same. I get that. And the skill level is not the same, although there is pockets of very skillful footballers. But at the lower levels, the game still hasn't evolved. Take down out of it. And every other team I've seen this year between Division 3 and Division 4, even in the lower parts of Division 2, play the exact same football they did last year and the year before that. Um, down... Conor Offerty's in there, well experienced player, done it with Kilku, right up to the top, has done it with Down, and you know, has been involved in coaching for a long long time, a long, long time. He will evolve the game. Kieran Mina has taken that into from Derry into Down. And you can see that them boys there's no massive personnel change from last year, but they're a completely different team because of how they're being coached in a bit of football sense rather than just get up a lane, kick up your wing, stuff like that. So it's interesting to hear everyone say that about the different perspectives you need as a player and as a coach. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think Ronan's the sky's the limit for him because there's the for man and my God, the way they're attacked at times. And yeah, he just he looks like he's a very, very bright future in coaching now, it has to be said. And uh, best luck to Ronan going forward. And I suppose, uh, Kevin, we will move on to Cork against our man Parky Cueve on Saturday night. It was Cork 216, our man 216. So a draw. Um, obviously, our fellow pundits, Johnny Merton, Matthew Hurley, and Daniel Goulding. I suppose all had a bit of skin in the game. This one, very, very high scoring. Uh, pity this game was not being shown, or there wasn't even, yeah, no highlights of this game on League Sunday, which I thought was just madness for the scoreline that was in it. But uh, point shared, and Cork really did resurrect their league because at the start, you definitely wouldn't have said that. 
No, well, fair play to them. You know, they were they started like um, I don't know a wet a wet seal or a wet whistle. I don't know. They they just didn't blow at all. They were not clicking. They weren't that game against Donegal was absolutely atrocious. And I would compare that our MA team that actually started similar to where Donegal might be. So I think if that game was played again, you would see a different result, um, a definitely different performance from Cork um, against Donegal. But to be fair to them, I'd say they were away in Portugal or a few weeks ago and they got their act together and they had obviously trained very well as a team and started to think more about football and what they want to go on. I, I think Munster Championship has to be a real opportunity for them is to show their development now. They have a decent break until they meet Kerry. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what way Cork go about their business going forward. With Armagh, look, it wasn't the, it wasn't the strong. It, w- it won't be Armagh's Championship 15 team this year, but it certainly wasn't far off their Championship 15 last year, despite having, what was it, eight changes. In it. You know, I, I, the days were by your... One of your weekend teams is having Rory Grugan on it, having Ryan O'Neill on it, you know, having Kian Mark on it. Those boys are, the day your weekend team has those, shows you how good actually your depth is. Um, Armagh, I'm really looking forward to this game out of all games. Armagh and Donegal. Um, Armagh are really, really fond and confident in kicking the ball. Croke Park is made for kicking the ball. Donegal, not so much. Um, and then with Paddy McBeardy going off yesterday, or on Saturday, um, it'll be a bit of concern for them as well. But I think what we're going to see this weekend is a stark reality as to where Donegal are and where Armagh are. It's not they're not they're not on the same playing field at the moment. Whoa! Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. No, no, I don't think Donegal are in good place. I just think yeah. Armagh. I said last week. I think Armagh are the fourth best team in Ireland at the moment. Hmm. What about the penalties? Uh, they practice and they bring geezer on. He can tell them that we're some beforehand. I'll not get that far. If I have all that they can play, I'll not get that far. Oh, Lordy, you're right. Bring on Conor Gilligan. Maybe he might take one for them. Or Donny, Kieran Donny. There we go. Uh, Donegal against Mead on Saturday night, Mr. Kennedy in Bally Buffet. It was Donegal 118, Mead 110. Um, Joe Sheridan would not have been a happy camper after this particular game game obviously we got their uh, division two status secured in an advance of this game obviously very good win for Tony Gall Tanya O'Brady injured though um Jim McGinnis probably should have been resting for this picture game but obviously Jim sees different things um and obviously Mead 110 obviously Colin McGorks saying after the game that the the schedule is a bit crazy and so on and so forth so um welcome to intercounty life Mr O'Rourke you may get used to it yeah, I think Meath will be disappointed in only going in at half time with four scores. You know, not ten to one three at half time, six ten. Um, maybe doesn't look as bad as one three, but whenever you measure in scores, it's a big difference. Like it is a big difference in that. Um, Donegal will. I'm not surprised that McGinnis played McBeard or didn't rest as many players. I think he he will work off a small panel whenever push comes to shove. He doesn't have an awful lot more opportunities before the Ulster Championship. You know, he'll work off a small panel on that and you'll probably see that it's 18, 19 players that he usually well he was never one for running teams of 22, 23. You know, he had a, a core play he had your 15 and then there was regular sort of subs that would have been made into that. And I think that's where he's getting to now. He's used the league for to run his players and now he's starting to wind that down. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, McGinnis will always have something up his sleeve. I think Geezer's probably been a, a bit more the, the cuter here at the minute, whereby he sent up the, the under-20s to Donegal for the McKenna Cup, and then he played no football at all. Like in, in um, Armagh that day, they, Armagh didn't play any football at all, and Donegal seemed to be taking along at 85 90% of what I think that they could deliver onto it. If McBeardy's not playing in Crow Park this weekend, it will be a significant loss. Like we said earlier on, around about Paddy and around about you know, Shane McGuigan's this word and David Clever. Paddy McBeardy is the go to man for leadership and everything in that sort of Donegal team that they need. If he's not playing this weekend, it's a seven, eight, nine point game. If he is playing, it's a five or six point game. That's that's the difference he can have in it. You know, he's a five point game man, not just for scores, but just the energy and the smartness that he brings to his play. There, me to be disappointed that they didn't perform. Maybe getting seven scores in the second half will help them. 
But no, they, they don't. I think Meath are where they are. There's still an awful lot of development needed in Meath. They're not going to do anything in, in Leinster this year at all. They'll be hoping for maybe a win whenever it comes to um, a lot of part of the, the championship season with Sam Maguire and stuff there. But they're not going to do any damage to Dublin at this rate. No. Still a work in progress. Yeah, it's just that work in progress though, Kevy. Like it had always a work in progress, you know, like and I know obviously Colin Burke has gone in there and he's been very realistic in his views about the, where Meade are at and going forward, but it really does go to show like, you know, Kildare's going down to division three, Meade are surviving in division two, um Loud's not doing with Loud had an okay uh, league campaign, but oh like Dublin and that Leinster championship, like it's it's probably just a joke really at this stage, isn't it? Like the way it's gone. It is, it is, you know, it's lip service you're paying to the Leinster Championship, it's lip service you're paying to the Munster Championship. Um, Ulster and Connacht, although Connacht a lot smaller, Ulster and Connacht are only one sort of surviving at the minute. And if it weren't as equally split as that, you'd probably be saying that a complete overhaul is needed. But you know yourself, John, Ulster Championship is the best competition that's there. We can't get rid of it, we shouldn't get rid of it, because the depths of the other ones aren't there at all. But yeah, I mean, what's, what's going on in Kildare? Now they're a bit different in the fact that they have been able to stay in Division 2 again. They are not renowned for having the depths of Kildare or Meath or Dublin, you know, in terms of their club sizes and things like that. So it's probably an achievement to stay in Division 2 again, especially after losing Mickey Hart. Um, but it was very close to it, you know, it was very close to them. It down, very close to Meath. It actually went down as well on the day two. Um, one less performance elsewhere and you would have had a two Lancer two Lancer teams going down. But it is what it is, you know, they 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 whatever has to go on in Lancer to fix it has to go on. But I don't know whether that is a conversation for now or other ways it's it's it might be a big ointment just like the LGFA and the Kamogi coming across. It might be a five or six year project plan to try and fix those uh, provinces. Like, are we talking 14 lenses in a row for Dublin this year? I stopped counting after four. <laughs> I don't, and, that, and that's not disrespectful to you. Know, oh, it is a joke, though. It's yeah. in there, but it is, it is a joke. Um, and part of that is, you know, like, part of it is that we take a finance out of it, okay? You take a finance out of it, the, the amount of investment is put into Dublin by the GA, but also credit has to go to Dublin clubs as well. They 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 are willing to invest part fund um that you know their their GPOs. I think Hill McCud are like they're like Saudi at this stage. Like there's like oil money being pumped in there. <laughs> hey, there's a I mean that Kerry lad probably not have a chance of playing for them for the next five or six years. And he's you know it it, it was uproar at the weekend. Um, but no, I think that's probably our um, divides coming in there. It is, I mean, but the thing is, you have to give, there's a democratic, or a, a demographic shift between Dublin. Dublin's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And these teams, these players have to play somewhere. And rather, I mean, you only have to look, I was looking at, it was the Galway team the other day, where they had two boys from Kilmacud, you know, lined out for them, the Sligo team had, uh, I think, a Rahini man as well in there too. So these players will travel from Dublin to their county to play. But it has to be made easier for them. If we are where we are at the minute in terms of you must train three nights a week with your county and you must do your collective gym sessions, unless counties cop on and say, actually, do you know what? Stay in Dublin, we'll invest our time in coaching, use a group of seven or eight or whatever it might be there. Um, it, it, it's always going to get the same sort of result unless we change something and I mean change something as in what are the clubs in Leinster doing beyond I'd say Dublin what are the clubs in Louth doing what are the county setups in Louth doing to improve um to close that gap because that's what they had to do they had to continue to close the gap not try and catch someone they have to continue to try and close the gap it's her mm -hmm. yeah invest in youth invest in other age teams invest in everything but it's oh, it's, yeah, it's Oh look at yeah, like I suppose we're long in the time, we're long in the long in the time talking about it, but it's just yeah, Dublin are just going to coast home to another Leinster Championship when it comes around to it. And this weekend's game against Derry is probably going to be the last competitive game until an All Ireland semi final, and that is just mad stuff, Miss Kennedy. But anyway, uh, Kildare against Loud, Miss Kennedy on Saturday night. It was Loud one twelve, Kildare twelve points in Netwatch Colin Power. Good win for Loud, uh, Kildare. Uh, seeing the funny tweet at the weekend. I know we shouldn't laugh at people's misfortunes, but uh, some record seven losses in a row. Yeah, very, 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 very disappointing for them. 
Um, a better performance, you know, obviously coming up against Louth, uh, Louth going okay without being brilliant. They were a kick of a ball away from getting the point out of that game, which is extremely sad on, and on the part of Kildare. You know, the, the Johnny Murdoch, you know, often say about the proud history of Kildare have and, you know, that they're, they are a very proud football county. And that may, you know, it is true. They do have a lot of history, but history don't get your points on your table at the minute. You know, people talk to me about my home club, St John's, and what a powerhouse they are. St John's haven't won anything since 98, and before that it was, a, it was the 80s. So you can't live on your history forever. You, you have to create your own. And unfortunately for Kildare, I mean, let's face, let's face it, Ryan's not going to be there next year, but who's going to go into him? Who's going to be in there? Shawnee Johnson, go back. Uh, <laughs> the only thing is, I don't see Davey Burke being in Ross Common either, so maybe Davey Burke <laughs> no. Kildare. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. And I think it was a Johnny Murtis said there a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, that Oshie McConnell might be able to clear a job. Don't know about Oshie, to be fair. I think Oshie's smart and cute enough in that way. I, 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 I watched him yesterday an awful lot, and I think he would do a lot better for taking himself off the sideline. Um, I think he yeah. would do better as a he's manager deep, yeah. up in the crowd and just, you know, trying to... Trying to call the game as he maybe commentates it. You know, he's a brilliant commentator. You can see things going on. I think that he doesn't see what's going on whenever you're down in the white line. Um, I don't know. But in saying that, you know, he, he's been there. He knows more about football than I'll ever know about football. And um, if it's... Ah, debatable, Mr. Kennedy. You're well, a genius. I, think, well, I don't want to blow my own trumpet there, John. <laughs> let's just say, he, he's, he's a medal or two more than me. Uh, but no, like a friend yeah, of mine, yeah, yeah. Gavin McComiskey, he was, he, he was a big cross man. Big, uh, big love of a lad and full forward for cross your name good years as well. He would often talk about Oshie and saying, you know, he's a very smart football head on him. Oh, I did, yeah. But if, you, if you're emotionally involved in the game, I've seen him a few times yesterday. He actually kicked a water bottle at one time out of frustration. Didn't get a penalty. It wasn't a penalty. Very soft. It wasn't a penalty. Um, He turned around and he kicked a water bottle and you sort of hit between two people. I'm not going to say it hit somebody, but it hit between two people. And I was like, Jesus, Oshie, relax yourself. But he went back and he apologized to him. Sorry, it's grand, but there were two uh, workload people anyway, so they weren't going to get caught up with them. But no, I don't know. I think that Davy Burke, maybe it'd be Davy Burke and Oshie McConnell in there, and I don't think <laughs> that would not work. But I would like to see the interviews after games. I tell you that much. Uh, let me see where are we now, Mr. Kennedy. Yes, we're moving on to Division Three action, Mr. Kennedy. The action, the the buzz, the excitement eh, over the weekend on Sunday. It was your own county, Antrim, Mr. Kennedy. Antrim against Wicklow. It was Antrum one fourteen, Wicklow fourteen par four, fourteen points in Cargan Park. Uh, good win for Antrim. You'll be happy. Uh, Wicklow are down to Division Four, so they went up and then went down again. As you said, Ocean McConnell. Probably fairly irate during the game, and obviously the Antrim senior footballers got the pictures after the game. And my God, them fibre boxes looked like the job, Mister Kennedy. <laughs> yes, young Patrick got it. Um, he's <laughs> messaging me last night about. Yes, uh, you know what? I'm all for favours. Um, Dominic's a good lad. He's the owner of it, but I'm all for favours and another promotion of it, but only after you win a game. I win. Oh, yeah. after win, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's done there, Jesus. Um, no, I, I was at the game. It wasn't a game for the ages. Antrim looked like they were five, six points better off throughout the game. Wicklow were a bit, run a bit like hell. chickens at home. I didn't understand. I was sitting in front of their two stats people. were sitting just up behind me. And there was a guy up and down. And whenever they, I noticed the press, they dropped off to the 45, dropped off into their own 45 as well. And it was completely, it was mad. There was no evidence to it. It was no, the game hadn't evolved to the point whereby you could say they're winning a lot of their shorts and getting scores. And had Antrim converted the scores that they, the opportunities they had, they would have won the game by seven or eight, nine points. The the two teams were completely different on the day. Um, Antrim done very, very well on the workload kickout in terms of pressing and forcing the workload keeper to go long. The first few times he went long, Antrim cleaned up and um, we sort of started to come back into it before the half. The goal that Antrim got was pretty, um, it was a shit goal. You know, I can't, <laughs> I was trying to think of big words there, but it was a bad Fortunate. goal. Fortunate, fortunate. No. I, beyond that, it actually came from a lost cause, a hit and hope into the, trying to go for a point, I think, drop short. It bounced in the square, hung up in the air and it just happened that the big lad got up ahead of it. Um, it was just madness. It wasn't there. But it shows you where, like, to be fair, Andrew had done all right to stay in Division 2 or Division 3. I had them for promotion this year. I think if they had have had their squad there, they would have definitely been a push to it. But no, they for the team that they had there, 
Getting into Division 3 again next year, staying Division 3 is much welcomed. Um, it probably, we touched on it earlier on, I think, was it Tyra O'Kane said about it, Rory McCann, trained 10 minutes on Tuesday night, trained 10 minutes on Thursday night, and started the game yesterday. Now, regard, now he wasn't that good, like, to be honest, you know, he, he, what can you expect me? He wasn't good. He got his goal in a point, but, like, he was bait out, and the fullback got the better of him the majority of the times. But if you're looking around there and you've been training all year since... October, November, and someone comes back and really, but this really, is, but th- but this, but this isn't just. Th- th- sorry to bring him, but this isn't just happening over the weekend. This is, I, I even see this a lot in club, and it's like it's, it's probably coming into county a lot as well. Th- this isn't just something that's just been brought in, Mister Kennedy. This has been a big bloody problem in the GA for the years, you could say. Yeah, and it's panic mode, you know, even there's yeah. not just Rory, it's not against Rory. Um, you know, he was he wasn't brilliant, but it's his first game back in you know, eight eight months or so he got, so you know, um you can't really say much. But even like say Oma Cave, Oma Cave started the last game and half forward and then Oma Cave's at a half forward, he's played corner back, he's a good half back as well, but beyond that he'd be completely lost. And it's almost like you're a good player, you're gonna never try and save our day, save our bacon. It didn't work for them. Like they're getting by by skin of their teeth. They say I would have had a uh, young Nell Burns in a lot sooner. Andrew were very predictable in their play. Had Andrew played had that been a game against any other team bar Wicklow, Andrew would have been beat. Sorry, Limerick, it would have been Limerick as well. Limerick are an awful state. But uh, had it been another team and it was like um the Fermanagh Result were by your playing a different team and you're relying on them was getting the result. Highlander and played awfully yesterday. They would have got beat. Highlander and played down. They would have got beat by 30 points, other than 10 points. They're not in a good place, but they, they've done what they've had to do. And fair play to the boys are who have. Paddy McBride was fantastic. As we want to say, Paddy McBride is one of the best halfbacks in Ulster going forward. You know, he's a he's fantastic footballer. He can. He's a great, great food on him. He can shoot. Um, he was fantastic yesterday. That's why he got his favourite box. But um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Get that kind of, but, you, but you know what this kind of reminds you of? I don't know if you ever see these pictures on Twitter where like these man at a match awards, you, you get like a bag of coal or you get like a chicken or something. Or like an answer really could, could they change this up a bit? Could they get like um, a box of kick, you know, KFC chicken or something? Or you know, some of this would that that'd be class? Well, the thing I think there's one of them we do there's a fire stick in it, but it's not a dodgy fire stick. So what's the point? <laughs> What's the point? And it's like giving you a picture frame of somebody else's ma. There's no point having it. It's not your yeah, ma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By all accounts, them fire sticks, the dodgy fire sticks are good. I, I don't have a clue how they work, Kevin, so I don't know. I have no you idea see, what you're doing. Turn it on. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Uh, would would Antrim put it up to the dubs on current form? Antrim put it up the dubs? Yeah. See, Lander and Cullen put it up the Dublin's Manor team at the moment. And here, I don't know, dude. I have to say, I was critical of them last week. Um, under under 20s, they went man to man against Toronto and got absolutely annihilated. Yeah. Last week, the management, Nal Jackman, wasn't who, you know, his comments in the paper were probably a bit deflecting away from his own responsibilities. But he spoke very, he'd he, he done the right thing by the end players against Monaghan and he played defensive football. The opportunity was there to win the game. It presented itself. They didn't take it. They didn't get the result in the end, but it was a much better performance. The minor team were beat out the gate by Armagh. It was, it was embarrassing. And the fault of that has to sit with that management team as well. At no point in today's game, if you're any technical ability whatsoever, you, you, you cut your cloth and you say, actually, we're not good enough. Lads, we're going to protect us here. We're going to help you develop. What we're going to do is work on a defensive game as much as what we can and just hope that we're there at 55-minute mark and hope we can sneak at the end and put a bit of respect back into the jersey. You can't yeah. go man to man. Our man fancy themselves this year to do a lot of damage in that main or under-17 competition. Andrum don't. Andrum are a shambles at the minute of that age group because for a number of reasons, but uh, their management can't let them boys go out at that age of 16 and 17 mm-hmm. and get absolutely annihilated by an Armagh team who are the same size as them, same age as them. Yeah. All of a sudden you're going from, they're better, you're, you're thinking already they're better than us. Yeah. You're, you're just going right down below, you're proving it. You bring yeah. that even within five points against a good Armagh team, playing boring defensive football. Yeah. Up better for, it's, not, it's not a huge spectacle, but you have to cut your claws. 
So yeah. you know, watching um, Lawrence and the boys get the finger out and do right by them players. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that score came in on Saturday. I think I sent that in around lunchtime, or was there in lunchtime or two o'clock? I sent that in, and my God, like it was a uh, just answer. Oh, look, it'd be, it's probably for another day's podcast or another day. They like, could do a step podcast, maybe on answer football, Kevy. But my God, it's 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 hard and reading. It just has to be so disheartening for some of these underage teams. For the Antrim lads, because like they're, you know, these county kind of setups, like they're putting in effort, they're going to the gym sessions, they're maybe dodging nights out, they're dodging this, and that you put so much into it, Kevy, and they're just not getting bang for the book. No, it goes down to management. It goes down to whatever your pre-season is. It goes down to whatever you've been coaching as your development teams. There's no way on God's green earth that someone at the age of 15, 16 is late years ahead. David Clifford stood out at Manor, but beyond David Clifford, there hasn't been an awful lot of players standing out saying they are head, head and shoulders above everybody else. Even Colin Brown, who's away at the AFL, was a good Manor, but wasn't outstanding. You know, the, whatever way these teams are set up and drilled on it, um, it falls down to management. There's a responsibility as a coach to get better people at the at the first thing. You have to make them kids better people at the end of the day. You know, that's what your objective, people on the pitch and off the pitch. And part of that is to allow them exposure to the harder teams, but by playing a style of football that works for you. Go man to man against uh, what should be a very fancy our my team doesn't work. I wouldn't like to have been in that um, change room after the game. Actually, my mates involved in the under-20 setup, and I haven't even spoke to him about the result. You know, I, I wouldn't mention it to him at all because I believe it's um, it's an embarrassment. That's all it is, and it falls down to poor management, poor coaching. I get teams can get beat. I get teams can get beat by five, six, seven, ten points. There's no reason in this day and age for a team to get beat by 30 points by any other team at the same age level. Yeah. Oh, it's tough. It's tough, and I'm obviously from a cabin end of things, like like you see all them results. It's just, you know, it has to be very tough on players now. It has to be said. But I suppose, Kevy, we will crack on to the other action in Division Three over the weekend. It was down three fifteen, Clare one ten in Park Esther. A great win for Down, and obviously Down go up to uh, Division Two, and that was a hell of a result in Clare. My God, that's something they definitely did not expect, I suppose. And then you had awfully against Limerick in Glenis O'Connor Park. It was awfully 110, Limerick 12 points. And then last game of the weekend, it was Sligo 114, Westmead 11 points in Markfitz Park. Those really matter, Jot. Westmead and Down are up to Division 2 next year from Division 3. And then we'll move on to Division 4 action, Kevy. That took place yesterday. It was Carlo 117, London 110 in Edwards Cullen Park. It was Waterford 9 points. Oh Lord, Leash 519 in uh, Carcanor. And then it was Wexford 218, Longford 29 in Chadwick's Wexford Park. Very good win for Wexford. Ben Brosnan played his 175th inter county game for Roscommon. Uh, I'm lost for words, Mr. Kennedy. For Wexford, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Some go on. Some go on. Um, Wexford, they, you know, they can count themselves. They can't. They can count themselves on lucky. They, they've they've scored. They've tallied enough points there to get them promoted in Division Three, and they haven't done that in the head to head. For me, the head to head is the first way to go. You know, Leitrim had a better head to head on them, and they deserve to go up onto it. It's as simple as that. I think that um, Leash should have been up last year. Justin McNulty's been down, and now he's got their house in order. A good Talchin Cup run. You remember they were embarrassed by down last year in the Talchin Cup. If they get a good touching cup run this year, El Son and Gooch stayed last year. With Andy Moore, I read somewhere yesterday, I think it was, was it Longford? Andy Moore went for the Longford job and he was told, no, you're not a big enough name. And now he's taken Leitrim from Division 4 with Longford and they're up in the Division 3. So yeah. fair play to him. Um, I speak to him after the, their under game last year. It seemed a nice fella. You know, was pretty pleasant, you know, happy enough to talk. I'm very honest that day, so if we weren't there, we have a lot of work to do. Maybe this is to kick up the backside with uh, Mickey getting in there too, that they need to be able to sustain themselves in Division 3 next year, and that has to be their objective for next year too. Down, sorry, John, I know we jumped on Division 3 here, but down, down are, I'd say that a Division 2 team playing in Division 3 all year long, all year long, they didn't perform against Westmead. They missed an awful lot of opportunities against Westmead. They have evolved greatly since last year. In order to stay in Division 2 next year, they're going to have to evolve again. They're going to have to become more 
consistent and get more scores. They're good at going forward, but it doesn't always result in scores. That's their biggest downfall. They're still not at the RMR level, so they, beat, they will beat Antrim by 10 points. They might get beat by RMR by 6. They really down really are poor man's dairy. I was watching them at the weekend there. Like I wouldn't say maybe he's poor man's dairy. I know you've kind of referenced and said that in recent weeks, and that's probably where maybe but I'd say they're a common dairy team or like similar enough dairy, but my god, like yeah, they are definitely enjoyable to watch. And Mr. Lafferty has to move them very, very well. And then the other last game of the weekend, Mr. Kennedy, it was Leitrim against Tipperary. It was Leitrim 15 points, Tipperary nine points in Avant Money Park, Sean McDermott. Andy Moran and Mickey Graham are probably still in some water hole down in Leitrim, singing the lovely fields of Leitrim, Mr. Kennedy. They're up to Division 3. Yeah, fair play. And a hard year last year, especially going away to New York and getting beaten in the Connacht Championship and stuff over there. So good couples to them. They're up in the Division 3 and fair play to them. Temporary, my God, what is going on in temporary football? You know, Monster Champions in 2020, was it? 2021. Yeah. Same as us, 2020. Horrible. The one at the same day as us. The one at the same day as us. We did regress big time, but we got ourselves back up. Tipperary, um, Tipperary need to get, and it's probably common sense, but the need to get Mickey Quinlevin and Connor Sweeney back playing um, together because this crack of Mickey, Mickey Quinlevin being in and out and in and out, that's not good for stability. So I don't know, Mr. Kennedy. It's hard to know. I remember seeing the house of that when I remember seeing it was on RTE or so. They were doing an interview and obviously it was during COVID, so everywhere was closed, but Clon Mel was completely burr and not empty. There was nobody on the street. There was it was lockdown, obviously. But that just gets a sense of maybe that was a true reflection of where temporary football is. How do you mean? Like there should be, yeah. Emptiness. Just there seems to be no it just doesn't seem to be right that there's no support for it, that there's no it was almost like a, 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 a net with a hole in it that they, they fell through and there was nobody ready to catch them. So maybe, you know, obviously with uh, it was a weird time for anybody, but just looking at that game, looking at that street now, it seems to be where temporary football is completely blank, completely burr and not going anywhere. Mm. No support whatsoever for it. Yeah. So, it's, so temporary football is kind of the COVID. I don't know if COVID was that bad. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Cut that out. I know people <laughs> died um, and things during COVID, but no, I think that it just seems very bare and bleak for where Tipperary is. I tell you what, Mr. Kennedy, right, and I don't know how your, fix, your weekends are fixed and your, your during the week. If me and you managed the Tipperary lads, would you be on for it? The mileage would be incredible. Well, I, I wouldn't be able to make it. I drive an electric car, so it would take me four hours to bloody charge, I'd say, Dublin somewhere. So by the time I get down, John, like, you know, I'd be as well just emigrating the Tipperary. And at this rate, I don't think it would take me. <laughs> <laughs> the mileage is always going to be split. The gear. Just the the say about that the, helicopter. The, the meals after training. Can I, can, I, can I twist your arm here at all? You can twist my arm. I What's the mileage? 55 PMA. <laughs> We'll do what everybody else does with car share and then save and travel separately. <laughs> <laughs> and saying that, if you're traveling in the car with me, you probably need the mileage for yourself anyway, just for your mental health counseling after the game, after the training sessions. I'd love it. I'd absolutely love it. Uh, we will take some of the team someday, and God, God forbid who that team may be. The Waterford lads, maybe. Nice mileage down there. Do you know what? I see it. There's see what goes on at inter county level apart from the top teams. What goes on underneath isn't too dissimilar to club teams. You know, taking a club team can sometimes be a bit worse than taking under county teams. You know, like seeing the McIntyre and stuff in Antrim there, you can bet your back say that uh, it's he would probably get a lot more hassle if he was taking his own local club team because he's probably a lot closer to it. I'd say Andy gets a chance to switch off by driving back home, working in Dublin and coming back up again. I know, for example, that whenever you get up to the, the top of that game, and I'm not saying about the top of your carries and doubles. I mean, even down, you know, your top level of coaching and management. It's not just turn up the training and go. It's information. It's data analysis. It's game review, proper game review. It's working as a management team. It's work doing one-to-ones. Like even this idea of one-to-ones with players, that is a lost sensation on most managers down the lower leagues. But one of the ones are, and that's for everybody in the squad, be it number 35 down to number one. It's here's where you are, here's where you're going, here's where you're doing well, here's where you need to improve upon. And that may be a 15-minute conversation. It may be an hour's conversation. But those are happening 
right and regular at the top level all the time. And that's why in the likes of Dublin and Kerry and even Derry to an extent, you have players there who have no chance of getting into that team this year, but they don't miss a training session. And it's not because they want a free tracksuit. It's because they're constantly being communicated with and being informed about their role and what their role is. And if people were happy or people are informed of what their role is and what's going on, they're more likely to buy in. And you wouldn't, like, I don't have an issue at the minute about players walking away. They have an issue at underage. I think it's about seven or eight players at Manor have walked away this year just because they didn't know where they were sitting. And that is lessons in management, lessons in leadership that is missing in the GAA for many teams. It's not just about setting up a drill and telling them, here's how you run and fast or yeah. blow so There's yeah. a lot more to it. It's a whole psychology of leadership and the whole ethics of business. That's all. Yeah, it has it is obviously gone very professional. And I know obviously like a lot of people say like these backroom teams, but there is actually so much the odd thing. I'm hearing video analysis they go on for hours and then I thought it seemed to take up a lot of time. But Mr. Kennedy, I can't twist your arm. We're not we're, we're not gonna be taking a team for the foreseeable, are we? Not this year. I couldn't get away from swimming on Saturday. Maybe you're out some. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. look at her my, went, well it was on the ticket this year for one job in Antrim but they went elsewhere which was fine um, no you're on the ticket interesting 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 Mr Kennedy our boat of our futures are hopefully bright because uh, we all have mortgages to pay oh sorry did I say that <laughs> we all just love the game no <laughs> Right, Mr. Kennedy, before we both get in trouble, this weekend's action in the Alliance National Football League finals. So big stuff to look forward to. And we will crack into Division 1 on Sunday, Mr. Kennedy. You have Derry against Dublin in Crow Park at 4pm. And of course, the game is going to be live with DJ Carr. Tickets are on sale now as we speak. They're being caught. They're being bought. Everyone's getting on the bandwagon. Looking forward to this game this weekend, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to the four games this weekend. I think Mark McCartan, um, son of the late Don McCartan, had put up a tweet yesterday saying around about mixing the games up rather than three and four and on a Saturday and two and one on a Sunday. Uh, mixing them up and you probably get a better better day out, let's say. And I think there's probably legs that I'd love to see Division One, Division Four, you know, even going into the Saturday game. Um, and then Sunday, Division Two and Three. I think that would be really, really good for the legs of the least followers to be able to go and see your Dublins and you know, um, Derry's as well. There's a lot, there's more lessons to be learned by watching top teams play than teams at your own level, and that's where it is. I think that it's a good, I think it's a brilliant opportunity for Derry. I think it's a great opportunity for Derry, a really good opportunity. It's almost like um, it's a free shot for them. You know, they'll be able to see what they're like in, in Croke Park, they'll be able to see if they can play for 70 minutes in Croke Park or 75 minutes in Croke Park, if they can kick a ball in Croke Park. Um, and if they can't, they can go back and work on it and train. They'll know what their weaknesses are. So it's a free hit for them. I do see Dublin coming out on top of that, just simply because Dublin are a flan at the minute. You know, they are a flan at the minute. Um, and Armagh and Donegal, I think Armagh are going to come out on top and I think it'll be easy enough for them. Let's say Paddy McBeardy plays, it'll be a six-point game to Armagh. And if he doesn't play, it'll be a lot more. Um, at least maybe eight, nine points in there for Armagh. Then you're going down into the Division Three final, West Mead and Down. It'd be really interesting to see as well what Down actually do. Down done well against Mead last year in that game, but blew up in the last four or five minutes. Not too dissimilar to what Derry did against Kerry. But again, I think that Down are a better team. I think Down create a lot more opportunities than West Mead. If they take their opportunities, it's a no contest. Um, I think that they will walk that final as well. And Conor Lafferty will be looking. If we want to win the game over Andrew Mitchie will do and then look into Armagh. But it'll be a good opportunity for him to bit of silverware. And that team, he always talks about this mentality of winning and having the 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 winning mentality of being able to say we've plaked a trophy. So they'll be going down there with a, a full-on strength team going down to win it. And then you have Leash and Leitrim. Leash at the minute are just seem to be the, the informed team in Division 4. You know, I know that Leitrim played them the other week and um, they won, but uh, I don't know why that was... I don't know whether that was a full-on Leash team out in there. I would like to, I would like to see Leash do well in Croke Park again. I don't really care who wins it. Either team who wins it would be you know welcomed. But I think after the, the embarrassment Leash suffered against Down last year, hopefully it doesn't leave too tr- too many scars there. And maybe what do you call that guy? The, what do you call him? Or oh, uh, the small fish fella. Colin Park. Oh, 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 Colin Park's a very quiet fella. It, it wouldn't cause much of a stir, would he? 
No, maybe I'll put him back in his box and let him know that Leeds football is actually all right and Justin McNulty's him on to, to bring him and keep him in Division 3 next year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, I know. In fairness, Leitrim coming up there as well. I know Leitrim... And what, what's mad, Mr. Kennedy, Leitrim played Derry in the Division 4 final in 2019, if my memory serves correctly. And look at Derry, all Ireland contenders. So it does go to show, put the work in, put the graft in, keep the team together. Who knows what's going to happen. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, as usual, uh, an absolute pleasure. I suppose your four games this weekend, the four finals, uh, your player to watch this weekend and bet of the weekend. Probably not much value, but let's have you. Um, geez, I haven't given any thought to it. I'd like to see um, Lorca Murray or Derry. I think we'll keep an eye on him to see how he gets on in Crook Park uh, against you know a team like Dublin. Um, it'd be interesting to see as well. I think that with any real competition in there? I don't think. I think the only games really that'll be close is the Leash and Leitrim game. I think that's you the only might get, game. You would get, you get a bit of value with. I have a look at the odds now, but you get a bit of value with Leitrim, surely. Yeah, but it's where they're up to that. It's where they're up to that level. Yeah. Um, I, I think you know, even if you look at maybe the handicaps this weekend, you're probably talking yeah. most of minus three, minus four. I think yeah. even Harry and Dublin, they're handicapping that maybe minus three. I haven't looked yeah. at it, it's just it's amazing. Um, I think I think there'll be good games to watch, but it wouldn't be travelling from you know Mullenhead down to Dublin to watch it. I don't think Donegal will have a chance against Armagh, but that's only because they put Armagh on a pedestal um, and see where they are. And that depends if Ken McKinney. I think McKinney, I think McKinney has to do. A strong, has to play a strong team and do a high press in group yeah. I think he has to. Yeah, and you, you that's like Johnny Myrtle would be delighted to hear this, but like you really hold Armagh that high regard at the minute, even you know. I do, I think you know, all right, the maintenance shown it the other day, but there's, there's so much depth and quality in there. Like eight changes yeah. they made, and that cork team, eight changes they made. Arguably, like the Nugent, the men are you know, in there, they're, they're boys who be. I mean, Nugent kept them last year. Wayne O'Neill was their go-to man last year. He hasn't played an awful lot of league football this year. Austin O'Neill only came on. Um, I, I just do think that they're, they just impress me. And they, they just don't seem to click. That's the only thing. They've never clicked properly. But when it, it's almost like you're waiting on them going, Jesus, just come together, lads, and do it. Yeah. And yeah. if they do, they're seriously dangerous. I remember saying the year before Derry won their Ulster Championship, I'd said to the mates, you know, beforehand, they were like, Tyrone down. I said, not a chance. Derrier won the Ulster Championship this year. I've seen so much progress. It was a year after Gallagher was taking them and they were playing Donegal. They should have had Donegal done and they were afraid to shoot. So there's obviously lessons from that. Remember Donegal, whenever they played in the all Ireland final against Dublin, they took a lessons from it and went on to win the all Ireland next year. And I said to the mates that year, I said, Ulster is Derry's. It's home in a boat. Last year, I said it was Armaz, and they could be it by, you know, Derry and, and penalties, was it? Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that they, they are there. There are two teams for me that are up in there, and I think that this break has done, this not break, drop down to Division 2, has done them a world of good. Yeah. It's alert, it's learned, it's a, allowed them to develop their own set of football and play better football. Yeah. I think I I don't know maybe uh, Doctor as Kevin McGurdy always says doctors differ patients right but I think Donegal will give a good account of himself this weekend I don't know I think it'd be quite tight any draws this weekend no. four wins no no not unless as I say managers cut their cloth I can't say yeah. it. draws are a lot less like, this year I think the number of draws is down something like times three oh. Not I would have always been a man to say, you know, back a draw, back a draw. I think I yeah. said the three other games last weekend, I remember having, I think Armagh was one of them, so I got that one maybe right, but there was yeah. three other games I says that could have ended in a draw and that, that didn't, obviously. But yeah. um, no, they're, they're not as frequent anymore, and that's because teams are, the good teams are shooting more. They're shooting 50 shots a game, whereas three, four years ago, it was 16, 17 shots a game, each team. You know, they're, they're, they're almost twice as many shots now as what there was four or five years ago whenever the game is at its worst. We're back to playing football, Mr. Kev. We're back to playing football. After all this time, and we have a football review committee. I'm always going to end each podcast we do saying the fact we have a football review committee. Yeah. The game is not all in a bad place. All I have to do is rubber stamp and say, yes, and it's good. I've just approved it. It's like whenever yeah. you get your homework saying, you know, your mom doesn't do your homework for you, but she checks it and she goes, yes, it's all okay. And <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, I got an invitation for the football review committee start today, so that yours yours probably got lost in the post. Sorry, Kev. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, it was it was me, not you. It was me, not you. Mr. Kennedy, as usual, an absolute pleasure to be joined by this week. And of course, the podcast brought to you by yourgrets.com. Use Rural Gym at podcast to get 15% off on the website. Leave finals this weekend. If you're heading to Croke Park, get yourself organized at orgoretro.com. Mr. Kennedy, thank you very, very much as usual. Thank you. No worries, young boy. See you after.